our feet as we go before the Lord. Good morning, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this place. And we dedicate this service unto you, that you indeed may be glorified, and that your people may be edified. Father God, we just thank you for all these, your servants, who have answered the call to function in a higher level of ministry. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. And our desire is for you to be glorified in everything that we do and everything that we say. So right now, as we proceed to do what you have called us to do, we thank you, we praise you, and we release the service into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Today, we are here to acknowledge the work that the Lord is doing in the lives of these candidates. Come on, let's just give God a praise for that. The scripture says that promotion don't come from the east or the west, but it comes from the Lord. And what, what we realize is that as man, we can't put anybody into an office. It's the Lord himself that raises up his choice vessels in the seasons and times that he's appointed. And this is a season that the Lord has determined that it's time to, to put some people in certain positions. And that's always indicative of 
the Lord establishing order, order in his house. Amen. I, I can tell y'all smiling behind the mask because the people of God, we love order because everything God does is in decency and in order. So we love that because for me, it builds hope and expectation is what might the Lord be getting ready to do now? What is on his mind that he needed to get certain ones in position so that we can be ready to take on whatever uh, mantle is being required or released to us as a ministry. So we're very excited about these candidates. They look good too, don't they? Amen, amen. Thank you, amen. All of the family and friends that have come to witness what God is doing and to share in this moment with them. Did I get ahead of myself? That was a selection y'all just did, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I should have jumped further. That's okay. Amen. So we're going to start now. So I want to ask the elders to come join me. On this side. Yeah. I'll pass this. Come on this side. And I want to ask, elders, come over this side. If I could ask the candidates for elder. Please come forward. Robert Mathis the third, Earl Render the second. present to you these ordained ministers to be set apart for the office of elder. After due examination and recommendation by the presbytery, we present these ordained ministers before you, congregation, and God to be set apart for the office of elder. Now the charge to the two of you is this. Do you believe in your heart that you are truly called of God to preach the gospel? Do you believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Bible, to be the only word inspired of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation in Jesus Christ and the only rule for our faith and practice? Are you willing to preach the word of God and uphold the doctrine of Jesus Christ and perform the ordinances of the church? Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you and governed by the discipline of the church and subject to the direction given in the discharge of the duties of your office? Will you be diligent in prayer? in the reading and doing what is contained in the Holy Scriptures, and be diligent to present yourselves workmen unto God that need not be made ashamed. So as we lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, we're setting you apart, consecrating you as elders here at Cross Culture Church. Church. May the Holy Spirit govern and guide your life in the direction that he would have you to go 
and in the course that has been ordained by this ministry, by the Lord, we give you, Lord, honor and praise. We set you apart now in Jesus' name. set you apart now as elder in this ministry of Cross Culture Church, assuming their, du assuming their duties as an elder here, that you will be one to help rule and govern the affairs of ministry here. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We now present the gifts. We robe you now. We place upon you the robe so that you can stand with us. As elder. Bible, God's holy word. Preach the word, be instant, in season, and out of season. Time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. Preach the word, be instant, in season, and out of season. We also present to you your plaque, certificate of ordination. Certificate of ordination. We have this day performed an apostolic duty of consecrating these to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us pray that they be faithful ministers of this great gospel and bring forth fruits of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. And as we pray, Lord, we thank you so much for the faithfulness to this point. But even as they go forth, you will show them your way and lead them in your path in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations and welcome. You're officially elders. We're doing a little different because of COVID, but praise God, we're still getting it done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Humphrey Ellerton. Pastor Walker. I present unto you this candidate to be, to be ordained for ministry. Okay, okay. First to the congregation after due examination, 
and recommendation by the Presbytery, we present this candidate before you and God to be ordained for the ministry. Do you believe in your heart that you're truly called of God to preach the gospel? Do you believe the Holy Bible to be the only word inspired of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation in Jesus Christ and the only rule for our faith and practice? Are you willing to preach the word of God and uphold the doctrine of Jesus Christ and perform the ordinances of the church? Yes, yes, I have no doubt. Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you? and governed by the discipline of the church and subject to the direction given in the discharge of the duties of your office. Yes. Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you? I think we've done that part. Will you be diligent in prayer, in the reading and doing what is contained in the Holy Scriptures? Yes. And to be diligent in, to present yourselves workmen unto God that need not be ashamed. Yes, yes, with the help of the Spirit, yes. Okay. So now we lay hands upon you. minister in the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the power of the Holy Spirit govern and rule over your life as you continue to discharge the duties to which you've been assigned and called to, to do. Bible, the Holy Word of God, preach the Word, that's your assignment, to be instant in season and out of season. Even when it's rejected, when people's hearts are hardened, you carry out your part and let God do His part. So we hand you the Word of God, the Bible, as you be faithful to all that's contained within the Certificate of ordination, we present it to you now as evidence, recognition, you're being ordained as a minister here. Amen. We want to ask the current ordained ministers to stand to your right, my left, and welcome your brother, your people. They're come forward.
Thank you. All of the candidates that have been called set apart for deacon and deaconess, would you come up, please? Sister Sheila, Kelly Vincent, Sister Terrell, Osami, and Jermaine Wolford, Angela Lane, Ministry of Health. Right, Pastor Walker, I present these candidates to be set apart for the office of deacon. To the congregation, after due examination and recommendation by the presbytery, we present these candidates before you and God to be ordained for the office of deacon. Now the charge to you, have you duly considered the cost of a life of service in ministry and responsibilities of the office for which you are being set apart. Do you believe the Holy Bible to be the only word inspired by, of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation in Jesus Christ and the only rule for our faith and practice? Are you determined to observe all the biblical standards for, uh, for that of a deacon? Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you and governed by the discipline of the church and subject to the direction given in the discharge of your duties, the duties of your office? Will you be diligent in prayer, in the reading and doing what is contained in the Holy Scriptures and be diligent to present yourselves work men, women, <laughs> and men unto God that need not be made ashamed. Okay, as we lay hands upon you, as we anoint you with oil. As the Holy Spirit has set you apart, to discharge the duties to which you've been assigned. And we pray, even as you're being set apart, that you will carry out faithfully that to which you've been assigned. Set you apart now in Jesus' name. We set you apart now in the name of Jesus to carry out the duties faithfully which you've been assigned. hand you your, these certificates we celebrate with you as you continue to serve as you have served but now we are saying and recognizing your service even all the more so Jermaine Wolfhawk Sheila Benson Kelly Terrell F. Abbasanya. Yes. Yes, we will. After this one. Now, this one has a special assignment as deacon, deaconess, but also she's continuing in the service as Ministry of Health. We had a pair of gold gloves, but they were formal, so we held them off right now. But we're setting Angela apart as deaconess and ministry of health. 
Amen. And before we celebrate or dismiss, we just want to, at this time, we'll do it again in the service, but acknowledge our deacon, our deacon, Kiran Bowman, who transitioned just a few days ago, and we want to honor him. He would be standing here, along with the rest of them, if he had been on this side. But praise God, he's celebrating on the other side of glory that God has promoted him to a high office Amen. where his service and labor has completed. So we pray as we continue to honor God and appreciate the gift in Kiran Bowman as a deacon here at Cross Country Church. Congratulations and God bless you. The deacons here at Cross Country Church, would you stand and receive your fellow deacon? Deacon White is making the presentation. Okay, you have been presented these gloves to start working. Amen. <laughs> Angela Benton, come forward. Pastor Walker, I present to you this candidate for ministerial licensure. To the congregation, after the examination and recommendation by the presbytery, we present this candidate before you and God to be licensed in ministry. Now, Angela, do you believe in your heart that you're truly called of God to preach the gospel? Do you believe the Holy Bible to be the only inspired of God to lead all to eternal life by salvation in Jesus Christ and the only rule for our faith and practice? Are you willing to preach the word of God and uphold the doctrine of Jesus Christ and perform the ordinances of the church. Will you be obedient to those who have rule over you and governed by the discipline of the church and subject to the direction given in the discharge of your duties, the duties of your office? Will you be diligent in prayer, the reading of and doing what is contained in the Holy Scriptures and be diligent to present yourself a work person <laughs> unto God that need not be made ashamed. Yes, I will. So as we lay hands upon you and anoint you with oil, we're setting you apart as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Set you apart now as we anoint you with oil, representative of the Holy Spirit, for the duties ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord, by His Spirit, govern your life so that you can carry out the assignment faithfully unto Him.
Now this is God's living word that's being handed to you. The words written on these pages are quick and powerful and they're sharper than any two-edged sword. So as I hand you this word, preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. Amen. And your certificate of ordination as we set you apart, licensure rather, we set you apart as a minister of the gospel. Amen. Now these are your fellow ministers that's awaiting you. So let's be, receive your sister as she joins forces with you now. You have another soldier to fight. <laughs> the good fight of faith. Smith, Darren Brown, Domingo Drakes, Pastor Walker, I present to you these three candidates for induction into the Cross Culture Church Deacon and Ministers Training Program. Reginald Smith, Deacon Trainee, Darren Brown, and Domingo Drake, Minister Trainees. Amen. As we pray for these inductees, they're one step away from stepping into the area to which they're being assigned. So we pray that the efforts from this point going forward be of such that it will demonstrate faithfulness, loyalty to him, and loyalty to the ministry. So Father, we pray for these inductees as they step into their calling, that their calling may be fulfilled, that they would not allow anything or anybody to stand in the way of them carrying out those duties to which you have assigned them. So we bless them now, and we give you the honor, and we give you all the praise in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's give God praise for all of these. Amen. Yes, so we, I, we want to do something that we didn't plan, actually, but it just feels like this is the direction we need to go. We want to ask all of the, no longer candidates, but all of the ministers, all of the deacons, to come join us and stand before the congregation, including the ministers and deacons in training. Just come fall in. Come on, y'all, we can thank the Lord while they're coming. I asked pastor for permission to do this because, let me step out. I asked pastor for permission to do this because I know the things that we've been talking about. And let me tell you, none of you are here by accident. Every one of us have been chosen by God 
for such a time as this. We don't know what ministry looks like in 2022. We couldn't have imagined the things we've gone through in 2020 and 2021. But God knows, and whatever is in store, whatever the assignment that, that is given to us, we are the ones that's responsible for modeling what it looks like to be obedient and submit to a vision so that the congregation, those seated here and those online, will know which way to go because they follow the leaders. And I just want to say this. We just did something last month where we acknowledged this man of God. Let me tell you, thank God for the gifts, financial, all the cards. But can I tell you what the biggest honor is? It's when we grab hold of the vision and we find our place in it. We're not about titles. This church has never been a ministry about titles. But what God has done is dispense a, a kind of grace, if you will, to raise up leaders. And we're here to be raised up into what we can't even imagine. But we got to stick close to the man of God. And I think it'll be appropriate right now for us to make a commitment to the Lord and to him. Because your leadership goes as far as he has allowed or commissioned us to. We're not anything that we think we are if he's not set authority. God has placed us to serve under him. So we got to make a commitment that we don't go put our mouth against the man of God. We're not going to speak ill of the vision. Listen, that's easy to say when we love everything that's going on. But what about when we don't understand? We need to be committed to prayer for him and for each other and for this congregation. So we stand with pastor between God and the people as an intercessor. And we stand between pastor and the people that a lot of the stuff that will be directed towards him, when we're serving right, we'll absorb it. Y'all need to hear me. <laughs> and we are graced to do so. And, and when it gets to the point that we are unable or don't feel sh the strength to stand and absorb, then we need to say something. Because we don't want to have not one leader left on the battlefield. We don't want to leave anyone behind. We want to cover each other, pick each other up, prefer one another, strengthen one another, cover one another, encourage one another, push each other forward, stir up the gift that's in one another. We need to be there for each other so that we can make it easy for him to lead, so that he can have the confidence that when God speaks, there's a group of people that's ready to pick it up and move forward. So we presented each new candidate, but can I represent the ministers and deacons to you, Pastor Walker? Your leadership. Amen. And I'm reserving a special message in a few minutes to all of you, all that serve, but also to all of you, because we understand that God has also set you apart. All of us who are in the body of Christ have been set apart for the specific use of God. So by all means, as we share this word, we want it to really resonate within your heart. We want it to take root within your heart, within your lives, so that you can have a clear understanding of who you are in Christ and the direction God has given the body of Christ because as we serve him, as we serve others, we're serving him through our service to others. So we're going to take uh, a break, but you can, uh, we're not touching now, but you can wave at them or you can, if they want a fist bump, you can do that. But. We just want to congratulate 
all of the all of the candidate well former candidates but now those that have been set in office today so amen if you so let us all stand let us all stand and we thank you so much for the service rendered for the work that you have already done in ministry through your faithful servants and as they are being set apart it is merely recognizing what you had already done because you ordained before we recognized even the necessity to ordain them so our ordaining them is coming into agreement with you so lord we just pray now that your spirit will operate so strongly within their lives so that the work to which they've been assigned will not be done in their own strength but it will be lord your strength working in them so in this we give you the honor we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to, in, in 10 minutes, we're going to have a prelude as we prepare for 10 o'clock for the message to the congregation as well as to those that have been set apart today. Amen. <laughs> 